am thrilled to be uh, talking today with with Cheeks and with Vincent. And uh, and and I know Vincent that you are part of Autism Today, and a big reason why you are with Autism Today is is you are two proud parents of two amazing children that happen to have autism. And uh, and I know that you have two children, and one is more severe as it's called versus the other and that you're looking for tools and techniques to help you navigate um, the, 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 the sometimes the landmines or the not so big a landmines to have harmony and love and inclusion in your home. And I believe once we go through core values index and describe the various energies, you're going to understand each other better. You're gonna know how you can you know that that's the goal of our of our conversation today is have tools and techniques to be able to understand each other to help each other to look at each other and go i get you you get me and 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 now you're parenting as a as a united front versus on an individual and then sometimes when you are in when you're individually parenting together, then that causes conflicts within the team, the family unit as, a, as parents. And uh, it's hard enough as it is, life is hard enough as it is, raising children is hard enough as it is. And if you can have as much information to help you navigate through these difficult times and know who you are, and we're all growing until we're six feet under, then this would be a really wonderful tool for you both. So thank, thank you. you for letting me have the chance to do this. Thank you for inviting thank us. Thank you for having yeah. Firstly, what the core values energies are, a definition of all of the four energies. Vince, I know I did that with you once, but for Cheek's benefit, I want to make sure that she has everything as well. And I'm also going to want to um, really kind of focus on the differences between the two of you and, uh, and, and help you understand because however you are cheeks, you're not right or wrong and Vince, you're not right or wrong, but when you can be mind mindfully aware of how each other comes to a situation based on how you are wired, your basically your innate unchanging ways, then that will help you understand each other and it'll help you understand um, life and it'll help you understand the dynamics within your family. So I'm thrilled and honored to be able to do this Thank with you. you. So I wanted to show, um, firstly, uh, Cheek's profile, and uh, I have to underscore that nobody has ever in, in the whole million plus people globally that have ever taken this assessment, no one has ever been a perfect square, wow. which means 16, 16, 16, and 16. And uh, we've had some people close where maybe it was 14 and 17, but we've never had anybody be a perfect square. Sometimes one would think, well, it's awesome to be a perfect square because then you have all of the energies to work with. And there are that that is a, a, a pro of having all of those energies. On the flip side, because everything is so act or so um, equal in a sense, you don't know which personality or which one of you need to bring forward. And what I mean by personality, it's not like you're splitting your personalities, it's which energy do you bring forward into the into the room that is most needed at that moment. So for, for Cheeks, 57% of your energy is coming from love and wisdom. So love, wisdom, knowledge, and power. So you, um, you fall into a good 75% of the population where we're either love, wisdom, or wisdom, power. And myself, I am love, wisdom, power, knowledge. So um, you think it's just a simple square, but it really is based on the numbers. And I'm going to go over your specific numbers and compare the two of yours. And then we're going to work on how that's going to gel collectively. So I wanted to show you your profile. And then this is Vincent's. So ironically, 57% of his energy is coming from wisdom and knowledge. So he is more bottom heavy, as I call it, but and I will explain that as well. So he is certainly living in the energy of wisdom, which is um, assess, sorry, not assess and solve. It is assess and solve. It is uh, assessment of solutions and uh, figuring out how to come to a conclusion with the least amount of hiccups, as you have for that as well, uh, Cheeks as well. So 57% of your energy, so your waking hours are you oscillating within fleeting seconds, moments, milliseconds between your wisdom and your power? 
Now I'm going to go to you, Cheeks, and uh, wanted to share, ironically, your 57% of your waking uh, energy mm -hmm. is love and wisdom. So Vince, you're living in the wisdom mind. And while you have tappable energy, Cheeks, in, in wisdom, you are living first in your love mind. So right there is a disconnect between the two of you. So now I'm going to describe your differences. So this is an example. Someone, when, you, when you're over 24 in, in, uh, in numbers, um, these numbers mean a lot. When you're over 24, then that means you are profound, meaning that this particular uh, example has two accessible energies, but love is the, is the highest energy and it is their, their primal energy that they work in. And so people that are profound in that, it's not a bad thing. It's just something to be more mindful of because it's, it's the place you want to land all the time. It's your comfort zone. And we have more growth when we can stretch our comfort zone. A comfort zone is not like a balloon that you blow up. And then when it deflates, it goes back pretty much to the same size. A comfort zone is something when you can stretch, that's now your new normal. When you stretch your comfort zone again, that's your new normal. So the more you can expand your comfort zone, the, the better that is for you. Um, so this is an example of a, of, a, of a graph of, as I mentioned, profound. This is someone, not so much for you, Vince, but I, I call this bottom heavy. And some of the wired in life challenges for someone that has their energy in wisdom and knowledge is they can go and go into knowledge and they assess and solve and they're Rubik's cubing and thinking of all the data and then they go into their mind and their head and they're now doing their knowledge the conservation of data they're putting it on excel spreadsheets they're seeing patterns they're they're doing their homework and then they go huh i'm going to do a little bit more research and they go into wisdom and they gather more data and then they go into knowledge and my point is is you can get into what's called analysis paralysis. So you might have a lot of balls in the air, a lot of activities going, you're spinning a lot of plates, but you're not necessarily concluding all of those actions. And I've also seen this on the aut autistic spectrum as well, where, or ADD individuals where they may, um, they can't complete things or they, they, they might hoard a little bit of like, they, I'll, I'll keep this magazine for later because I want to get to it. And then next thing you know, their magazine piles are this high because they haven't gotten to it. So I'm being extreme in some of my examples because I want to show you how um, this can define and, and, and help you understand who you are. And then, as I mentioned earlier, this is purely intuitive. You know, when you're going into power, making, you know, taking risk, a power person has no problem taking risk. Sure, let's go bungee jumping, where a knowledge person is going to go, I might go jump bungee jumping. How old is that bungee? How accurate is your scale? How long have you been working here? Like they're not going to take the risk, right? So a power person is going to take the risk and a knowledge person is going to be very conservative. So, you know, they are more overt and overt in conflict. So you're going uh, mostly, you know, mostly intuitive. And actually, when you add these two energies up, this is intuition. You add these two energies up, that is your um, creative. These two energies at the bottom, that is your cognitive. And these two is your practical. And then also when I go side by side, so this is you, Vince. You are what's called um, independent. So you're thinking and then you're taking action. And this is where chicks, you might be going, cheeks, I apologize. You might be going, Vince, why didn't you not come talk to me? Or we want to, I want to talk about this a little bit more. And you're already making a decision and, and you're feeling perhaps a little bit unheard and, 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 and why, you know, and that your voice isn't making the difference and that you haven't collaborated as comfortably as you would like in that experience. Does that make sense? Do you feel that that might happen? In some cases, yes. So I, I want to talk about each of your energies. So for, for you, um, Vince, at, at Wisdom at 26, and for you, Cheeks, at 19, for every three points, we call that a degree of magnitude. So it's like a 0.3 on the Richter scale or a 0.6. You don't really feel it at a 0.3. You have to, you feel it more at a 0.6. You definitely feel it more at a 0.9. So between the two of you right there, you've got um, seven points of difference. So just over two degrees of magnitude. So for you, 
she recognized that this is where Vince likes to live is in that assess and solve and always in his head a little bit more. And, and, and for him to come to love, his love is 13 and your love is 22. So that does not mean that Vince isn't lovable in any way, shape or form, but he is just not, he's not being pulled into the emotion of your autistic children when they are having their episodes. So he's more even, remember, compassion is the, the catalytic value. So he's not going to that higher, higher elevated emotion or lower elevated emotion, whereas I know I would. And I give an example of my two, ch my two sons. I have two sons, Kyle and Eric. And um, Kyle, who's older, he still lets me kiss him up. My younger son, Eric, doesn't really like that. And I was thinking, because I'm, he's not love, and he was saying when he was like 15, 14, like, please don't kiss me good, you know, good night. I would come into his room and kiss him good night. And he said, don't. He, he just felt that that was an invasion of his privacy. And I'm like, well, I'm mom. I want to kiss you. What the heck? You know, I'm mom. I'm going to kiss you. And I had to actually stop the, I had to, I had to work this through me. Firstly, I have to respect him as a human, even though he's younger than me and he's my son, he has an opinion. I need to respect his opinion. I can't force myself on him. You're going to get a kiss and you're going to be loved whether you like it or not. He didn't want that. So I, you know, doesn't mean he doesn't love me and I don't love him, but he just didn't want me to kiss him goodnight. So my point is, is that hurt me. And so that might hurt you cheeks is when maybe someone is not, and you need to recognize then that, that if someone is emoting and they're more knowledge, then they're not going to give us love people what we want. And that's where it'll help be helpful for you to go into what's needed here. Do I need power or do I need wisdom or do I need knowledge? Because remember you're tappable in all of them for both of you, you're tappable in all four of your energies, mm -hmm. but you just need to be more mindfully aware of that. So, so for, for love is, 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 is that's how you come into the room. Uh, you want to like, how can I make everybody comfortable? you hungry. You know, that's what us love people do. Whereas Vince might be going, I got some work to do. I got to get things going or, or you might be even more, um, more cognitive and linear in your thinking of how to deflect and diffuse a situation and you're not being emotionally pulled in Vince. So um, because I'm aware that, you know, you have two autistic, amazing children and that uh, Vince seems to have a better connection in, in being able to de-escalate an escalated situation. And so for you, um, chicks, cheeks, it'd be more helpful if you work more into your wisdom and leave your emotions out out of it and that's hard because you know you care but you just have to go what what's needed right now and what I find is helpful instead of going what's needed do I need love wisdom power knowledge I actually go to the con the, the the catalytic value and I go what's needed right now faith do I just need to take action like and make things happen or is truth part of the equation what needs to be done or do I have compassion or is this fair and just and so I find by actually thinking what needs to be done right now, that's how I can be a better pro human family member, wife, friend, you know, those are things that, that matter to me. So interesting, you both have tappable knowledge. So for you, Vince, your knowledge is at 20. And so between 25 and 19 on the ladder, it is you ordinarily and regularly operate in line with these core values and you find it energizing. So it's a, it's a fun place to be, you know, people that have that, those types of numbers between 25 and 19. So your knowledge, Vince, is at 19 and, and uh, uh, sorry, at 20, but your knowledge, um, Cheeks is 18. So you're at the you oh, between 18 and 12, you occasionally and with effort operate in line with these core values. So what I mean by that is it's tappable, but we're going down by numbers. If you were 12, it would be harder for you to get into your knowledge. So my knowledge is 12. So that, that doesn't mean I don't know a lot. I know a lot. I, I'm smart. However, when it comes into the the data, the, the, the put me on Excel spreadsheets and that. So I like to be, for me, I like to read oil and gas magazine, you know, being a proud Albertan with our amazing energy. Uh, I like to stay on top of what's, what's happening, but it's dry. 
and it's technical. I don't mind technical, but it's dry. And I have to psych myself up and go, okay, Patty, I better read this. And I can feel myself maybe an hour into the, you know, into the read that I'm losing my own attention span and I have to put it down and I have to come back to it. So that's an example of knowledge where for those that are later in knowledge, that would be an example of it's, it's only in you to give in short bursts. And if you were under 11, and if let's say you're at five or seven, that's an energy that's not even tappable. So it's not in you to give. So don't even worry about it. Don't work on that for yourself. Just like that. Don't, that's okay. Right. So you're never going to catch me being an accountant, but when it comes to, you know, um, highly charged emotional situations in, in human resources or in business or in life, uh, life coaching, I step up and that's where I rise to my strengths. And so I just needed to, to just kind of talk a little bit about the differences that way. So your power is at 14 cheeks and, and Vince, you're at 17. So you're one degree of magnitude. So you both have good power, but remember at 17, you're on the higher, you occasionally operate and at 14, it's a little less for you. So taking action, that's where your love might sabotage you a little bit and go, you know what, quit thinking about it. Let's just poop or get off the pot. Let's just take action. I think that will be better for the family. And that's where you would actually have a little bit more um, cohesion and things where you would just go, you know what, let's just, let's just let it go. Where the two of you can fortify each other. And this is what my husband and I do. It's not like you want to be like each other. Actually, the more differences you have, the better you help each other out. So my husband, he likes, he's wisdom knowledge. And, and we have friends, I think I may have shared this with you, Vince, offline before, but we have friends and they make me laugh. They, they have such trust in Greg, that's my husband, in his, um, in his decision making and his research and his knowledge that when they say, what TV did you buy? What camera did you buy? What computer did you buy? What did you buy? He goes this brand and they go and they buy the exact one. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you need to do your homework? And he's like, they're going, no, we trust you. You've already done it. Why should we waste our time? So, <laughs> so my point is, is, is there's, there's a, 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 a handshake. Mm -hmm. I don't like, you know, my, I, my husband, he certainly helps me more with my IT situations because he likes that. Whereas that devalue, it just, it's not an energy I want to spend time time in so we help each other be better because of that and um and so if you have someone who's high in knowledge and lighter on the love someone who's more in the love can actually help fortify that knowledge person and together they're like batman and robin or bert and ernie or superman and wonder woman right you know you're you're a better team because of that and so so for you cheeks you may have felt that vince may not have valued you or or heard you and vince you may sometimes go well i know what to do it's so obvious why why are we talking about this let's just move let's just do it it's so obvious and so and you're feeling unheard and so this is where this because your love is different um and love is probably one of the more main energies for us humans because at love for you vince at 13 and love for you at 22 we're at nine nine points of difference so three degrees of magnitude so Vince, you will you will have higher um, um, understanding if you can raise your love up and you will have higher understanding if you could suppress your emotions. Remember what us love people do to a fault? We have that fairness factor. Why would you do that to me? I can't believe that. And also count when we give too many chances. That is a big one for us. Us love people, we give too many chances. So be mindful when we go, when we're giving you know, our friend 10 chances too many, right? That's where truth and trust is no longer part of the equation and we need to call it faster. So us love people tend to be taken advantage of more. So I don't like to be taken advantage of. So catch that. And again, the emotional language that's being used, love people use that, but catch the how many chances we give and start to go, is this truth? Is this trust? Now you're going into wisdom by thinking, is this truth? Is this trust? And then you can make your decisions. So it's nice to go back into wisdom on that one. Amazing you, how accurate it is. It's really. It's, it's crazy. I, yeah. I, I can. Right, well, while you're talking, I really, I felt three kind of scenarios that just define precisely what you said, right? The first one is, you know, we've got the two autistic children. One yeah. of them is severe. So when she has a meltdown or a breakdown, 
um, immediately, um, Cheeks is, I, 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 yeah, she's in distress <laughs> because I can't listen to this crying. I got to deal with it. And it's all about the, the, the child's feelings and mm -hmm. what they're feeling. And for me, it's like immediately, it's not that I don't care what they're feeling. It's like, I look at it, it's like, well, why is this happening? What mm -hmm. just happened? What is the reason? Solve and the what reason. needs to be done. Yeah. And forget, what about, to be forget about the feeling for a second. Let's backtrack. What yeah. happened? What are the three steps that happened before this? So that we can see what changed. Let's resolve that issue and it'll stop. You know, whereas sometimes she might be so involved in the feeling that there's no solution happening. It just, it's like Band-Aid, 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 Band-Aid. Whereas I'm like, oh, well, let's just, you know, stop the bleeding first, you know? Yeah. So we, we approach it differently. Um, then there's the aspects of, uh, for example, um, when she's when she's at work and she's like, I, you know, these people at work said this and my boss talked to me like this. And, and for me, it's immediately, it's not that I don't care how she feels, but when she's talking to me, I'm not thinking about the feeling relationship of what just happened emotionally. I'm just like, oh, well, maybe he's trying to get her fired. Maybe the, all of a sudden there's just strategy, structure thing. Is, I think it's a power play. It sounds like a power play. You know, I break it down right away and I see it in a different logical sense. You know, and I disagree. <laughs> right. And then, and then, and then uh, there's the other aspect of like very simply, we're driving to a drive in, a drive through, right? And what drives me nuts all the time is if we know we're going, 20 minutes ago, I've already in my mind figured out, okay, well, we're probably going to get this and I'll get this. And I can ask her 17 times. So what do you want to get? What do you want to get? Even when I'm there, she's like, I don't know. What do I get? And she's not sure what to have. There's like no preparation. I'm like, we've been here 3 million times, you know, but it's, it's this whole, you know, what do I feel like? I don't know. Thinking do I want something that? Else. So I always just like, I always go there knowing I'm going to buy her two or three meals. I just, just to get it over <laughs> with. Bring it home. Yeah. The three favorite ones. I'm just going to get all of them. I get home. It's like, choose what you'd like to have. <laughs> so what that is, ironically, Cheeks, that is your, your knowledge talking. And you might think, well, really? Is that my knowledge? It's because you are now going into your head and you were thinking, what gives me the most pleasure? If I have this hamburger, do I want to, you know, is, am I going to get the most uh, enjoyment out of eating a hamburger or do I want this chicken with this really yummy sauce? And if I want this, this one's $5 more. And am I going to get more value out of eating this for $5 more? So I, <laughs> that reminds me, I love what you're saying. Um, that reminds me of a story when my son was younger, who, uh, you know, you hear doctors where they say they don't have good bedside manner. That means a doctor is fantastic in knowledge and wisdom, but they don't have that social emotional intelligence and the love, but make no mistake, they're rock stars in their technical knowledge of the medical, of, of, their, of, their, of, their, of their world, they dominate. And then the ones that have more bedside manner, they're the ones that have more compassion and they, it's in them to give. The, 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 the emotion. But I'm bringing up my son, Kyle, because when he was a little guy and I gave him $3 and we would go to a candy store. If you remember those, those gaming places where, you know, you, you put in a quarter, play the game, you get so many tickets and then you get those tickets to redeem. Oh, I hated those places. It would take him half an hour. He would think, is that rubber ball going to give me more enjoyment than this and that? And he, and I'm like, hurry, hurry, hurry. And then that would get him all going, hurry, hurry, hurry. And he's like, I'm not, I'm not ready. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Because I'm thinking about me and I'm not, I'm not empathizing with how he's wired and what he needs for a decision. And so it's just interesting. It, it, you start to go, it's not about me. It's not about you. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But it's like, what are we going to do collectively? So you're right, Vince. You're the, you, you're not even emotionally involved, and and whereas you are cheeks, and you might be, and you might be thinking that's because she's female. Has nothing to do with that. It is because she's higher in love at 22, and for you, um, you might think it's just a male thing. It is not it at all. It is a fact that that uh, in, that she is is just she she's feeling the trust. And, or lack thereof, and how many times people are taking advantage of her good nature and, um, and why they may treat her, you know, like she's got that sense of fairness, right? So be mindful of that. So, so do you have any situations that you may want to share that, um, um, that maybe 
Sheiks, when does it work for you when you're maybe trying to, to um, address a situation? What works for you and perhaps what does not? Um, right off the bat, what I can think mm -hmm. is a work situation. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've been a manager and I, I, I lead a team of um, analysts. And what I love about my work is that I get to mentor them and lead them and guide them and whatnot. And I know I'm a great leader because I... I forget what it's called, but um, I'm an inspired leader where yeah. I do inspire and because I'm, uh, I get to know them at a personal level. So they, I know the team loves me. And my, I think everywhere I've gone in, um, my boss would always tell me, Cheeks, you're too nice, right? And, um, and I've always thought, well, I'm nice, but then I get, I get to ask them what I want them to do and they do it. They'll do it for me because they like me. They love me as a manager and whatnot. But um, I also sometimes get in trouble because mm -hmm. I'm too nice. And I don't know if maybe to the extent of people are, especially in politics, well, sorry, not in politics, politics in the office. That's yeah. where it, it's, it's not good for me because like what he says, it really impacts me or uh, um, affects me a lot because I refuse to believe that how can this person do this to me? Or no, they're not thinking that way, you know, or where is this coming from? I always ask the question in my head, why is this person like this? Where are they coming from? What happened to them? Uh, just so I can understand, you know, I come from a place where, okay, let me understand where you're coming from. Um, but when it comes to office politics, you know, somebody like a peer, because I'm a manager, or I'm a lead. So I have to work with peers who are, strong personalities I would say um, and they're bullies and that's where I have trouble it's I find myself getting upset and when I get upset I it really I didn't like that I got upset then you so go that, into manipulation yes mm -hmm. yeah so that's mm -hmm. where okay and then when I do get upset that's where it's really bad when I get upset because I it's almost like I'm stopping myself yelling at them but then people will say, that's not you. So that's where I kind of have to, I guess, m lean more on my knowledge, just remain in the facts and, you know, just, I guess, attack it from there. Um, I don't know. That's, that's where I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that share. Um, I'll give an example because I think it resonates with your example. Mm -hmm. um, I was working with this global insurance company and uh, the one leader, uh, there was a bit of a coup mm -hmm. where a bunch of her reports um, all within one week, five complaints were, were put towards her, right? Yeah. And uh, so all the, the it, was a, it was a bit of a coup, but they were, and she was very high in love. And their HR manager was very low in love and was wisdom knowledge. So she took mm -hmm. everything that came at her with those complaints at face value. Oh, okay. And she didn't do an investigation. She mm -hmm. took it as at, at face value and put the, the manager without even getting her side of the story on a performance improvement plan. So for the, the, that manager, that eroded all the trust. I can and, just imagine that. And, yeah, and I'm saying, so I had to coach the HR manager and say, you, you know, you need to elevate your love, your, your curiosity, what's happening, give me the facts, the date, you know, like, help me understand, but, you know, um, and, and, and so she needed to lighten that up. And so um, they actually cried together when they, when they found their way back to each other, but she had that heightened sense of why would they, feel, you know, do that to me? And you made that comment as well, mm -hmm. uh, Cheeks, where, you know, why would they say that? And I, I'm not saying that's a bad thing because you know like with crucial conversations you want to give you know for the most part us humans don't wake up and going let's go to work and and, and do a terrible job Destroy right? somebody. <laughs> that's right you know for the most part people show up and they want to do good and they want you know they they, they don't you know, 99.9% .9 of the people want to do a good job so I I like how you're giving your empathy but catch that faster where your empathy is too much, right? And yeah. going to where they say you're too nice, as a leader, where I like to gently challenge leaders, what do you want more? Do you want to be respected or do you want to be liked? Mm -hmm. 
And so it's, it's, you know, like, so you want to have, you know, you coach in private and you praise in public. And if someone needs to be taken offline and where you need to, you know, help them help you understand where they're coming from, then you take them offline in private and you learn from that, uh, learn from them. And then that way you have the data to now make decisions as a leader. It's, it's amazing when you, when you look at these examples in the light of CVI, mm-hmm. because I've always thought, you know, in my mind, but I never, comp- I didn't realize I was comparing myself to her. I was always like, well, I've never met anybody that just loves everybody. That She just trusts everybody and loves everybody, but she never sees the bullet coming. You know, she never sees the ball coming right to her face. I'm like, oh, that's that. There's something coming, and she's like, no, it's not. They'll never do that. I'm like, it's coming. It's this like they're setting this up. It's not coming. All of a sudden, she gets blindsided. She's like, what happened? And I'm like, well, you know, she's she's so into the emotional aspect, and but then when also she's describing how she's an inspiring leader, and she's always been in a management role, and people follow her because they like her. It's funny when she was saying that because I've I'm you generally in a leadership role, a management role, and. I've got a strong loyalty of followers, but they don't follow me because I like me. Um, for me, it's like, okay, Patty, I'll spend 20, 40 minutes explaining the situation so that you understand the logic of why you need to do what I'm asking you to do. Right. Yeah. I don't, I, I would never ask you, can you, you know, do it. Cause you like me. I would never expect that. I'm like, listen, this is why we need to do this because this is going to affect this person. This I spell it out, you know, completely. And then, well, every, well I, I believe the people that work for me and are loyal to me like me. It's not because of a liking as much as I think in a logical sense, in, in a preparation sense that, well, tomorrow's, you know, Patty's daughter's birthday. You know, I'm going to make sure she goes home. Um, I, I treat them, I, I treat the situation in logic. Well, what can I do? What does Patty want in life? You know, do you want to play baseball? Uh, why don't you go just leave work? Don't even tell anyone go play your baseball game and come back after we'll finish afterwards. You know, I, I, I create a loyalty and an inspiration kind of thing in a very different way. You know, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't think a lot of people just like me to like me, you know, but they're very loyal because I take care of them in, in the way that I think they want that they want to have a life and they want to do this. And they, you know, but I've always thought, well, well she's, I've met, she's always, she loves everybody. I mean, in the sense she trusts everybody and I can see like, I wouldn't trust that guy. I would try. And then, you know, something happens and she's like, Oh my God, I can't believe this happened. But it's that, it's that whole love trust thing. And then, and then for you cheeks, it might even be a, a deeper wound because you gave so much trust and, and um, you gave your regard, you gave them a high regard when they didn't deserve such high regard. And then you kind of get burned a little bit. Right. And so then you go, what's wrong, but there's nothing wrong with you. I would like to gently challenge you when it's and start with baby steps when it's not such a big decision, but start making decisions more independently in you versus you working with the team with your fellow fellow peers that are on the same level as you as leaders, because I can tell very accurately if I was to do a CBI for a business unit or a company and if everybody was was love first I would very accurately predict that there's going to be splintering and politics and clicks happening in short order because it everybody's going to go who likes who who likes who right and the love this is what they said you know and then it's just going to all come to life so there's a wonderful thing about knowing what the definition of love is and the spirit of, of, of core values index. But the Wired and Life challenge when you have too much love is sometimes we give too many chances. And that's the biggest, that is really the biggest lesson is to, to call it faster and to be more, take your emotion out of it and look at the black and white. Mm-hmm. And, and you might even want to write on a calendar. Like if, you, if you're having a conversation with a colleague or a subordinate about a performance issue, write down so you might have a verbal and say you know and then go back and write it down on paper or electronically so you can look at your black and white facts i think what i'm one of the things i will take away from here is just being mindful of the i forget what your word was the the you're you're giving out too many chances yes there are too many chances and we have a heightened sense of fairness yeah so that's one thing now with regards to, to Vince, the, the only thing I think I'm 
I'm realizing, or sorry, I'm identifying is when, to me, when he sounds upset or is frustrated with something, especially if there's something that um, I do or did not do, he, because he sounds the same as when he's talking to somebody at Best Buy and they didn't give him a good service. Like, oh, these people are so are so incompetent. It's always so, my tone. <laughs> I, I have a tone. Stupid. And it's like when he talks like that to them or about me, you know, telling, oh, this guy is best buy. And I see the same behavior, the see the same tone. Then that's where I get a bit emotional. Sorry. Well, because he <laughs> took vows with you, not best buy. <laughs> right. <laughs> he took vows with you not not to be, you know, like with best buy. You're his, you're his, his, his chosen one. Right. So, so remembrance <laughs> at, at love at 13, not that you're crazy in love with, not that you're not in love, crazy in love with your wife, but you're not emoting that. And so she's questioning, are you loving me? But you do, but you're not emoting it. So it'll be helpful for you because remember love at 13 for you is, is it, you have to work at showing your, you know, so be curious. How was your day? You know, tell me more about that. Don't just give her the answer to her problem. She just sometimes wants to vent. And because you're independent, remember, um, wisdom, power, wisdom, power, you're very independent. You don't need to talk to a lot of people. You don't need to do your homework as much. You're very comfortable being, you know, that's why you've had such success in movies and all the things that you've done. Right. But, um, but your wife, will, you know, will be better to, to just show her some of those um, emoting outwardly, it would be more helpful for her. And, and you know, I, sorry, sorry, Sal. don't get me wrong. He's like very romantic. Like he, he really does. And he gives me whatever. Um, sometimes I have to be careful on what I say that I want because he's going to buy me a lot of those. So he's very good at that. It's only when moments that he's frustrated that yeah. I get like, whoa, why are you behaving like this to me? This is like the same way I see you when you're frustrated with other people. So it's like somehow I expected there's a difference because I'm the wife. He's, he's going to give me more slap or whatnot. So that's that's where I'm learning to just see, to just think that, okay, he's really just like that when he's upset. I think it's also in a CVI sense. See, I, when she hears a tone, I'm not actually upset. I'm not mad. There's nothing going on in my head that is because if when when I'm mad at somebody or I'm angry at somebody at work, I actually get quieter. You know, I don't. I'm not a. I don't yell and scream. I'm not that person. I don't like tantrums. I'm not that kind of person. So in my mind, I'm not having a tone. Um, but for the things that frustrate me, which I think gives her a sense of the tone, is that. Uh, for, of a simple example, right? Um, she likes something. She goes buy something, and for me, it's like, well, a you did no research before I go to a store. I spend like two nights looking it up online and stuff, right? Oh, yes. I know all the details. I compare it to the other similar stuff. Which one's really worth it? And then B, I was like, you bought it three months ago and you didn't like it. And it, it, there's these, but she's like, oh, we need this. This is going to help her because of what's going on with the kids. And, you know, she's really like, oh, we got to do this. We got to do this. I'm like, we tried this and we talked to it with a therapist and it didn't work. And that was like seven years ago. And that's why we, it doesn't, why did you do it again? And then for her, it's like, I've got this angry tone. But for me, it's, it's, I think it's because I break it down with, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? If we already tried this, if you didn't, if, if you didn't read it, or I'm like, I spent the last, whatever, how many years talked to this therapist about this situation, but she was busy working. And, and it was, cause I was more of a taking care of the kids kind of role. Then she didn't have the luxury of the knowledge that I absorbed from these people. So, so my thing, Oh, the, well, that was not going to work. And she was like, well, can't we just at least try, you know, but there's just a different <laughs> angle because we're coming from two different knowledge places. You know? yeah. He's telling me facts, but then him yeah. telling the facts is like, and, 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 and I know I have to be aware of how I think as well. It's like, I can't take everything he says like negatively because yeah. like he says that that's the way he talks. And sometimes I just think, okay, I just have to take it this way. So, and, and actually now the way, and I never put it together, but because of the way she just explained it before with regards to work, um, because she said, you treat me like production assistants and you, you treat me like these, like she said, Best Buy, but 
she used to compare herself to like the way you talk to your production assistants. And I used to say, no, I would never talk to you the way I talk to them. But I just realized in my explanation to you, I do. In the sense that there's not an anger. I'm not demeaning in any way. There's nothing in the sense of my tone in my head. However, the way I try to get a point across is the same because I'm like, it's not emotional. You know, there's not a, there's not this whole lovey-dovey thing. It's like, well, this is the logic. Let me explain A, B, C. So yeah, I do talk to her the same way because I approach every problem like, well, this is why I think this is a better avenue than this because of this. I, t- I would talk to everybody that way, right? So to her, that's a tone. You're treating yeah. me like the people at work. But yeah. my, my thing is, well, the only way I know to get my point across is to show you the facts. Yeah, you, you, know. you, you are absolutely onto something. So, so Vince, you are very, co- not very, but you are more cognitive and linear in your thinking. It's, it's more black and white, yes and no. So, and, and, and remember the catalytic value for wisdom is compassion. So you're not emoting high or low, you're just neutral, right? So when, when Cheeks, when you say something and he's kind of monotone with no emotion in it, you think, you're kind of cold, right? And and but that's that's just you reading it differently, yeah. and and uh, and so for 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 you, cheeks, you are more creative. You, your your intuition and your creativity is very high. Why? It, that's why you're kind of sometimes maybe seeing what sticks, <laughs> throwing it against the wall and see what sticks, right? Yeah. And then that's where there might be that disconnect between you because you're, you're, you're in your desire to want to help and do such goodness, you want to throw it against the wall and see what sticks. And then you might feel that you're not being valued or it might, you might, or you're being judged because Vince might be being more cognitive and linear and saying, well, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. So why'd you do it? And you're going, well, where, why should I even try anymore? Right. right. And, 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 and if I may be, be so bold in our conversation today, I know we're being recorded, which is awesome. And I can see <laughs> you laughing a lot more cheeks and Vince, you're just sort of monotone. You're just, you're just there. You're listening and you're taking everything in and then, but I could even be going, well, is he listening? Are you, are, are you interested in what I have to say? And so I might be reading you wrong and that's right. my problem, right? Well, it isn't, it isn't, it's both our problems where I need to give you the benefit of the doubt because you and I have had many conversations offline. So I feel like I know you better, but you know, if I didn't know you well, I'd be thinking, why is he so quiet? Why is he like this? You know? And, and not that you're like that, but you're not, you're not smiling. You're not nodding your head and things like that. And, and so there's nothing wrong with that. It's just recognizing that, that you might need to give more to the love of the world since 75% of us are, are love wisdom, mostly on the love side. Right. So it'll help you. Yeah. It'll help you in business and it'll help you in life and, and friendships, et cetera. When, you know, when, you know, pretend you care i know you care but show it no she he he knows he doesn't smile a lot because he thinks he doesn't have a nice smile i I know i'm not photogenic (laughs) i don't know how we created these kids that look great in every picture i'm like i don't know where that came from it's not me (laughs) oh don't be like that you guys are a good looking couple in conclusion, I have um, an example of two very good friends that were working at this engineering firm together. And I, you know, the, the president wanted a CVI for everybody. And then I learned that they were friends. I didn't know. They went on a road trip and she's more wisdom knowledge. And the other one is more love wisdom. And they had a, they had a disagreement and the one who was higher in love was crying. And the one who was lighter in, in, in love was, was quiet. And she said, you don't even care. You're not even showing any emotions. You know, you're cold. Well, no, that's just that, like, especially when we go into ourselves and to uh, dealing with emotional situations, we go into our protect mode. And that's always going to be, you know, um, manipulation, interrogation, aloof judgment, all of that, right? So, so that's where that came into be. Anyhow, when I said there's nothing wrong, the fact that she wasn't crying and you were, she cares just as deeply as you do. She just presents it differently, and their friendship actually got stronger because, you know, she, you know, the the the, the love person was more the wingman when they went out socializing, and the other person was more the wingman for this, and so they 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 just got each other better. And when you can do that, it helps. So when we got married. Um, I organized everything. That's what I do, right? I prep and I organize everything. 
And right now, in my mind, it's like, is the camera okay? Is the light okay? What you're talking about? What's the next topic? What's in my mind? I'm thinking as a producer. Yeah. So it's like when you, what I learned is if you do all the work and you don't hire somebody to handle the wedding, and you're look, you're thinking all the problems, you're not smiling in any photograph in the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's totally what I learned during our wedding because I handled everything. So whenever anybody moves, I'm looking at the waiters, I'm looking at the menu, I'm looking at the time. And now you realize you're not smiling in any photo because you're working, right? Yeah, yeah. I always say too, and this is not this, when I say this for love, this is now a different thing. This is more on my side, on the spirituality side. I think what is needed more? So is it love? Not in the spirit of, of CVI, Core Values Index, but, or do I need to be love right now? Or do I, when the opposite of love is not... Um, hate it is actually fear and so it ironically works with cvi because faith is you know like confidence right that you've got inner you know but it's also your fear if you if you don't fear if you have fear that you're making a bad decision then you don't have the confidence you don't have faith in yourself so we want so the opposite of love is fear and so when you're taking action and making decisions on anything what's needed in the room right now you know, am I, am I responding out of fear or am I responding out of love? And then if you, if you figure out and, you know, you can think so quickly, if it's fear-based, then you can start to go what energy is needed most for this specific situation. Thank you so Thank you very, very much. much. Pleasure, Pleasure. Have a wonderful weekend. Take okay. care.